Henrietta Lacks, born Loretta Pleasant, August 1, 1920 through October 4, 1951, was an African-American woman whose cancer cells are the source of the HeLa cell line, the first immortalized human cell line and one of the most important cell lines in medical research. An immortalized cell line reproduces indefinitely under specific conditions and the HeLa cell line continues to be a source of invaluable medical data to the present day. Lacks grew up in rural Virginia. After giving birth to two of their children, she married her cousin David Day Lacks. In 1941, the young family moved to Turner Station near Dundalk, Maryland in Baltimore County so they could work in Bethlehem Steel at Sparrows Point. After Lacks had given birth to their fifth child, Joseph, she was diagnosed with cancer. In 1951, Henrietta Lacks visited the John Hopkins Hospital complaining of vaginal bleeding. Upon examination, the now gynecologist, Dr. Howard Jones, discovered a large malignant tumor on her cervix. At the time, the John Hopkins Hospital was one of only a few hospitals to treat poor African Americans. As medical records show, Mrs. Lacks began undergoing radium treatments for her cervical cancer. This was the best medical treatment available at the time for this terrible disease. A sample of her cancer cells retrieved during a biopsy were sent to Dr. George Gay's nearby tissue lab. For years, Dr. Gay, a prominent cancer and virus researcher, had been collecting cells from all patients who came to the John Hopkins Hospital with cervical cancer, but each sample quickly died in Mr. Gay's lab. What he would soon discover was that Mrs. Lack's cells were unlike any of the others he had ever seen. Where other cells would die, Mrs. Lack's cells doubled every 20 to 24 hours. Today, these incredible cells, nicknamed HeLa cells from the first two letters of her first and last name, are used to study the effects of toxins, drugs, hormones, and viruses on the growth of cancer cells without experimenting on humans. They have been used to test the effects of radiation and poisons, to study the human genome, to learn more about how viruses work, and played a crucial role in the development of the polio vaccine. Tissue samples from her tumors were taken without consent during treatment, and these samples were then subsequently cultured into the HeLa cell line. The ability to rapidly reproduce HeLa cells in a laboratory setting has led to many important breakthroughs in biomedical research. For example, by 1954, Jonas Salk was using HeLa cells in his research to develop the polio vaccine. To test his new vaccine, the cells were mass produced in the first ever cell production factory. Additionally, Chester M. Southam, a leading virologist, injected HeLa cells into cancer patients, prison inmates, and healthy individuals in order to observe whether cancer could be transmitted as well as to examine if one could become immune to cancer by developing an acquired immune response. HeLa cells were in high demand and put into mass production. They were mailed to scientists around the globe for research into cancer, AIDS, and the effects of radiation and toxic substances, gene mapping, and countless other scientific pursuits. HeLa cells were the first human cells successfully cloned in 1955 and have since been used to test human sensitivity to tape, glue, cosmetics, and many other products. There are almost 11,000 patents involving HeLa cells. In the early 1970s, a large portion of other cell cultures became contaminated by HeLa cells. As a result, members of Henrietta Lack's family received solicitations for blood samples from researchers hoping to learn about the family's genetics in order to differentiate between HeLa cells and other cell lines. Alarmed and confused, 
Several family members began questioning why they were receiving so many telephone calls requesting blood samples. In 1975, the family also learned through a chance dinner party conversation that material originating in Henrietta Lacks was continuing to be used for medical research. The family had never discussed Henrietta's illness and death among themselves in the intervening years. But with the increased curiosity about their mother and her genetics, they now began to ask questions. Neither Henrietta Lacks nor her family gave her physicians permission to harvest her cells. At that time, permission was neither required nor customarily sought. The cells were used in medical research and for commercial purposes. In the 1980s, family medical records were published without family consent. A similar issue was brought up in the Supreme Court of California case of Moore v. Regents of the University of California in 1990. The court ruled that a person's discarded tissue and cells are not their property and can be commercialized. Although Mrs. Lacks ultimately passed away on October 4, 1951, at the age of 31, her cells continue to impact the world today. To this day, Henrietta's cells are still being used for research purposes. Even the COVID-19 vaccine used her cells for testing. <music>